Hi, I'm Stephen Cox. I am the campus principal of Central Heights High School, and today I will be giving you a tour of all of our district facilities. We will start our tour off today at Central Heights High School. Um, this is the high school entryway. Um, this high school was built in 2011 with a uh, building bond that was passed in the community. As you see, all guests will come into the front office and be greeted by Miss Powers, our receptionist. Um, we do have all of the latest uh, security measures put into place, um, double locked doors, so that um, anyone coming in as a visitor will first have to check in through the office and get buzzed in um, with Ms. Powers. Um, all of our newer campuses, which is the high school and the middle school, are um, both equipped with that uh, safety feature. The elementary, as we'll see later um, in this tour, um, also has this feature, but uh, some additional construction had to be done in order to uh, approve that. Um, so this is our main hallway in the high school. Um, they call it Main Street, um, because as you can see, the little blue awnings um, to the right and to the left, those are our hallways or cafeteria, um, some other building uh, or some other um, location at the high school um, that all stems off of this main Main Street. Um, the first hallway that we'll walk down is the 200 hallway, which is um, our English and History hallway. So as we walk down the 200 hallway, you'll see uh, uh, kind of the layout of the, the, the building, the, the campus. Um, regular classrooms on both sides of the hallways. Um, you see the lights turn on as we walk down. That's uh, some energy saving features that were applied to this um, newer construction building. Um, I know our elementary campus, uh, again, those things were implemented um, just to uh, help save cost. Um, whenever no one is in the building, the lights will automatically turn off. Um, the end of this hallway here, um, as you see, will go out towards um, a little field. Um, where we have additional land that is owned by the district. This land um, is um, where we would have any additional building if needed. Um, the two hallways, the second hallway that will go out in just a moment, um, they would link those two together so that uh, we would have an additional hallway. Um, another safety feature that we have is we have some alarms up there at the top of the door. Um, so if anyone does open these exterior doors, which stay locked at all times, um, then a, an alarm will go off. We'll walk into one of the classrooms just so you can kind of see what the classrooms look like. Um, they're pretty standard um, classrooms. But the classrooms... Um, like I said, pretty standard uh, teacher's classroom. Um, this is Miss Scott. She is an English teacher here on our at the high school campus. All of our classrooms are equipped with a smart board. Um, and I say smart board, not the name brand smart board, um, but it is like a computer on the wall. Um, a teacher can either sync their computer up to the digital projector um, or they could use it as an independent um, computer itself. Um, as you'll see whenever we walk down this 200 hallway, um, we have a wall of photos. Um, and these are all of our seniors uh, for this current school year, 2023. Um, our elementary teachers come up every year and this is what they do. They bring pictures from when um, the students were in kindergarten and they post them on the walls. Um, it just lends itself to the family community feel that we have here in Central Heights. Um, 
Our school district has a little over 1,100 students. Um, at last count was 1,137 students. Um, and that's split through, you know, pre-K all the way through 12th grade. Um, our student population for the whole district um, has the majority, you know, white population with right at 70%. We have a 20% Hispanic population, 5% African American, and then the other 5% is distributed amongst um, all other races. One thing that we always get questions about from visitors on our campus, whenever we go into the restroom, um, people will always ask, where are the mirrors? Um, and whenever they constructed this building, they did not include mirrors. Um, I think that was by design, but a lot of times we will get um, visiting schools. Um, for example, we hosted a student council um, event earlier in the year, and so we had students from over 20 different schools here on our campus, um, and that was the question that we heard over and over is, where are all the mirrors? Um, right here off of Main Street, you'll notice we have our high school gym. This is the Russell Gymnasium, named after a former board member. Um, like I mentioned, this school is 12 years old, um, but it's very nice. Um, the basketball court just got resurfaced this year. Um, we're gonna walk this way as well. Um, this is the main gym, but we also have a gym in the back, um, which is our Johnston gym. Um, it's used whenever we have more than one game going on at a time. So for example, if we have a JV game going, the same time we have varsity games, and this is our second high school gym. We have a couple banners from state championships or state finalists in the past. So whenever we come through the backside of the Russell Gym, we go to the Johnston Gym. We have girls' locker rooms um, this way. Visiting locker room. And then we have the smaller gym, um, still regulation size court. Um, is our Johnston gym. So as I was talking earlier about kind of our um, student population, we have a little over 1,100 students in the whole district um, and have about 43% economically disadvantaged students, 7% um, 504 students, um, ELL or e, um, English And we have about 5% um, um, emergent bilingual students. Just back here in our boys' locker rooms. Down this way. And then over here we have what used to be um, the weight room and is now the cheer um, workout room, dressing room. Um, whatever it is, they store all of their stuff as you see. And when we go come out back from these hallways, we'll end up back in the Russell Gymnasium, which is our large um, main gym. And now we're on the home side. Home side has the same number of seats as the visitor side. Our district has about 22% um, of our student population are considered at risk, 5% bilingual, 6.5% gifted and talented, 8% um, special ed, and as we come out of the um, Russell Gymnasium, we're back in Main Street. And I really like whenever they um, built this campus, um, we have plenty of room for trophy cases. Um, we passed one earlier because we went into the gym um, and we missed it. But you'll see here as we're walking by 
Um, these are all of our state championship trophies throughout the years um, or state runner-up trophies just you know whenever we advance to state in different events the other trophy case um, but something that I thought was really neat is this is the original school bell um, from the original Central Heights School in 1925 the story is that it was found in a pasture owned by the Corleys um, when they found it, I guess through talking to other people, they recognized that that was the original school bell. And so they donated it to the school. And now we have it nicely displayed in our hallway. So this next hallway is our 300 hallway. At first glance, it looks exactly like the 200 hallway, um, just with what seems standard classrooms. But this is our hallway for... Uh, math and science and so when we go into one of these classrooms you'll see that we have three science labs on the right and then the classes that are on the left are our just standard classrooms that are used for math so as we walk into the science classroom you'll see it's set up real nice with uh, built-in lab tables um, got sinks capability for gas at all of the last lab tables um, once again I think another really great feature whenever they built this school um, we've actually had several school districts come and visit our school just so that they could see um, what ours looks like because the construction company that designed ours or the architect company that de designed ours um, shows other schools so we've had garrison come look at our school district um newton came just a couple weeks back um just to see what um, our school looks like i guess they're looking for you know similar build styles um that we have so as we come back out the um 300 hallway i'll mention that uh for the district in our taper report, um, our school district received an accountability accountability rating of an A. Um, we had a couple or one distinction for the district and that was post-secondary readiness. Um, and it says the special education determination status is that we met requirements. And as you see here, we have our cafeteria. Cafeteria is right off of Main Street as well. Um, and this cafeteria is shared by the middle school because when we look down the hallway, that last little blue overhang on the left um, is the middle school hallway. And we'll see that here in just a moment. Cafeteria. Um, middle school hosts two lunches in here. Um, high school also has two separate lunch periods as well. Pretty standard cafeteria. Um, once again, you notice the automated lights. Um, as we're walking down Main Street a little bit more, um, we see our fine arts hallway, also known as the 600 hallway. Um, our high school campus, we also received an accountability, accountability rating of an A. We had a couple distinctions. Um, we had academic achievement in ELA, ELA in reading, top 25% comparative closing the gaps, and post-secondary readiness distinction. So we currently have an art teacher and a band teacher. Um, our art teacher also does one act play, and I'll show you in just a moment where we have a theater room known as the black box and you'll see shortly why it's called the black box now that we now that we found the the light switch um, this is our band hall um, where we have one band teacher that is shared between the high school and the middle school and this is where they teach band a little bit further down the 600 hallway we have the black box and you see why Call it the black box everything is painted black walls ceilings everything there's our theater room um, our students currently you saw a lot of decorations in the hallway 
Um, they are prepping their um, decorations, their stage for um, our one act play that is currently coming up. Um, we compete in um, Woodville for the district one act play competition. So as we're walking back up the 600 hallway, the high school um, currently has 338 students, which puts us at the classification of a 3A, um, which is a really great size. We have 87% um, of our high school population are white, 8% um, are Hispanic, and 3% are African American, and then the, the remaining, the other races. Um, we have, um, about 24% of our high school population, um, are economically disadvantaged. As we walk towards the last portion of Main Street, um, we have our Ag Sciences. We have three classrooms. This first door leads to the shop. Um, and then these are the classrooms, which also have a... Um, door that leads into the shop as well. One of our favorite spots um, at the end of Main Street is just a great view we have of the back pasture. Um, real nice when the sun sets. It's beautiful, beautiful scenery. A standard ag classroom, um, some more sturdy tables, um, more so than the regular classroom. Got a couple of bird house projects on the shelf over there. And then as we come through this back door, we have the shop. And as we leave uh, the ag shop, we get to the middle school. school you see they have a foyer area as well um, where any visitor would walk into um, and as they walk in they would have to go through the office area security features as well just so they would have to get buzzed in and they would be greeted um, from the secretary miss richards their office area is a little smaller um, than what we saw at the high school Principal, assistant, principal, and counselor at the front. And then you would walk through the second door um, and enter to what they call Mini Main Street. Um, Mini Main Street. And they have two hallways that go off of their Mini Main Street. The first, the short hall to the left, um, which actually got extended five years back to add um, a few extra classrooms. Similar bathrooms, once again, no mirrors. And they have classrooms, and as you will see, their classrooms are um, just your standard classroom, just like uh, we saw in the high school. This is standard classroom. All classrooms have windows, which is a very nice um, feature. Some have better views than others, but all classes have windows. Um, once again, we see the uh, smart um, television. And then back into the hallway again. The middle school also received an accountability rating of an A, um, earning several distinctions as well. They received an academic achievement in ELA reading, an academic achievement in mathematics, academic achievement in social studies, 
top 25% comparative academic growth. Top 25% comparative closing the gaps. And a post-secondary readiness distinction. So as we walk down um, the middle school hallway, this first door on the left um, is their teacher workroom. Um, second is the nurse, which is shared by high school and middle school. We're going to peek into their workroom just so that we can see um, a new project that was added this year. Um, whenever this building was built um, back in 2011, they did not build faculty restrooms. And so this school year, these are the staff restrooms that were added this year. Um, just standard staff restrooms. But just the addition of this little add-on to the exterior of the building, um, and as you can see, this used to be an exterior, um, was over two hundred thousand um, dollars. Just so that to give everyone an idea of current construction um, cost for school districts. But um, as we mentioned, the middle school um, did receive an A rating on their demographics they have 284 students the white population is right at 69 percent of their students hispanic right at 20 percent african-american six percent with the other races uh, making up the remaining uh, percentage um, they have at 41 percent um, economically disadvantaged um, with a 4% uh, emergent bilingual population. Um, you noticed the district was right at 47% uh, economically disadvantaged with the middle school at 40% and the high school right around 20%. And we get an influx of students, of transfer students, whenever um, they come to the high school. Um, a lot of our students are um, they go to private school while in elementary and middle school and then once they get to high school um, we have a lot of transfers here at Central Heights and now that we're done with the middle school hallway we are back down at the high school Main Street which leads up to all of our other facilities that we've already um, viewed and so this is our arts classroom. Once again, a standard classroom, a little bit different seating. Um, typically, whenever you come in, um, there are lots of art projects out, but I know they were just finishing up their Valentine's Day unit. In which they made um, the hearts that I think we saw earlier on the, the windows and uh, Valentine's Day cards. Those are the hearts that they had made. In this 200 hallway, we have um, our family and consumer science classroom. And you'll notice there's a door right next to it. This door actually used to be a book room, but our SE, um, CLA or our family consumer science class has grown um, and the teacher needed an expansion. And so they actually took out the wall that was the book room and added just an additional space for her office area, um, some more room to add some more tables. Um, this past year, our FCCLA advanced to the national competition and we took eight students to San Diego. Um, one of our students um, actually got to sing the national anthem um, at the start of the National FCCLA competition. Um, and I noticed that Miss Renault has some pictures from that competition over here. Um, and those are our girls in San Antonio. And you see they finished second place um, in one of their competitive events. At the front of Main Street, we have our library and this library is shared with high school and middle school we see um, they have the window tent on there that says media zone 
And once I get the key, we'll walk back there and we'll see that we have two classroom areas at the back of the library. Standard library, books, um, seating area for students to come before school or during lunch and work on homework, um, read books, work on projects. Uh, we have a poster maker um, that gets utilized by teachers and students alike. Um, this is the high school computer lab. Miss um, Tipton's computer lab. And then we have our content mastery on the other side. And it also is a smaller computer lab with um, a workstation in the middle for Miss B to work with students. I was looking for the light switch, but I could not find it. field house um, which is an extra gym you notice that the exterior windows all have this um, tinting on it um, you saw it at the front of the middle school um, and the high school allows us to look out without people being able to look in um, just a standard gym um, regulation size but it is not a wood floor it's a faux wood floor um, a plastic material um, so it allows students to play for little dribblers, um, but not actual high school basketball games. Um, into the far side of the field house um, is where the weight room was officially moved. Um, like we saw earlier, um, where the cheer room is currently. This gym was built after the original high school, middle school. Um, buildings were built. Um, this was an addition that was added on seven years ago. Um, they quickly realized that they needed some additional space um, and so they built the field house. One current complaint that we do hear about the field house is that the field house when built was um, built with heaters um, installed but there is no air conditioning um, inside this facility. You still see uh, a couple decorations hanging up from the homecoming dance that we hosted in the, the field house. Um, but yes, no air conditioning, which apparently makes it a little uncomfortable um, in the late spring months and in the beginning of the school year, the end of the summer. And so they'll end up opening these bay doors um, and we have some exhaust fans that help pull, the, pull, the, uh, pull some air through the doors. We'll walk out the back door here um, of the field house. We'll actually walk out this side door um, and we'll notice um, the sand pit volleyball, but also I noticed this earlier, um, a few years back um, um, in 2021, they added these water bottle filling stations. Um, the back side of the field house um, is where they added the beach volleyball. Um, a lot of our PE kids come out here. Um, our actual volleyball team does not come out a lot to utilize these, uh, but it is fun for our PE classes and uh, some special events like senior night and such. And when we walk out of our field house, um, down the hill we have our track. And you'll notice inside the track we have some soccer nets. Um, we do not currently have a soccer team at Central Heights, but we do have a community um, club, soccer club, um, that is pushing to add soccer as one of our um, offered sports at Central Heights. Um, currently, I don't think we have the numbers to support that, um, but um, we do have some great parents that are have really taken on the the load there to try and you know provide some extra opportunities for our students um, and then when you look over you'll see our um, tennis courts uh, they all got resurfaced this school year um, one further over there next to the maintenance building and then one closer right here
Um, when we look over, we'll also see the baseball field and the softball field. And that's where we're heading next to get a closer look at those two facilities. So we'll take a look at our softball field first. Um, we see that uh, we are state runners up in 2011. Um, it has been a little while since we have been extremely competitive in softball. Um, but just the standard batting cages. Um, one thing that I will note as we're walking over here to take a look at our softball field um, is that currently there is a push from community members to um, upgrade our fields to turf fields. Um, and so that is the debate currently. Is, is that something that the school wants to sink that type of investment in? Um, because um, I think conservative estimates um, for a baseball and softball field to be turfed right now is around $2 million. Um, we do just have a regular um, clay and grass field with the press box here. And we'll take a look at some of our, uh, the dugout. Uh, one thing that they are looking at um, upgrading this next year are these pads. Um, you notice as we get a little bit closer that they have suffered quite a bit of wear and weathering uh, since they last purchased new ones. Some looking a little rougher than others. Um, small little dugout. Nothing too large. Nice little paint job. So as we're walking out of this softball um, facility, we'll take a little look over to the over to the right, and you see that's where the um, restrooms and concession stand are for baseball and softball. Um, also, something that's nice, um, they have the canopies over the top of the spectator seating at baseball and softball um, and I know from previous experience that that uh, is extremely beneficial um, whenever it starts to sprinkle or even just you know keeping sun out of your eyes. So we'll walk across the street to the baseball field and we will enter the visitors dugout. Um, we hung all of these signs this year in the gym and um, at baseball and softball fields um, just as a constant reminder uh, for spectators to show good sportsmanship they are oversaturated i would say everywhere um, we have a lot of the signs we've printed definitely a lot and hung a lot of signs but as we walk around the uh, visitors dugout um, Notice we get quite a bit of sponsors, but um, also we have a couple signs out there just showing some recent success. Um, back in 2017, we did win a state championship here. Playing grass field as well. Um, the the backstops, um, these pads, same as softball. Um, have seen better days, um, a little old and weathered. Um, <clears throat> some of the complaints that we hear from other coaches um, from our um, field is how small the backstop area is for a baseball field. Also how close these baselines are to the side. <clears throat> I'm not, uh, I do not know the exact recommended measurements for um, high school baseball fields, but apparently um, ours here at Central Heights is smaller than the norm. Um, which causes some complaints from uh, the baseball coaches that I know. Um, so we're walking over to the um, home dugout. Um, once again, you see how close the dugout is to the baseline. Um, apparently not what is normal. The dugout's a little larger than a soft. Hey, sorry about the cut off. Um, apparently the iPad battery dies pretty fast. So um, like I was saying, the dugout for baseball, a little bit larger than what softball is. Um, and then they have some batting cages around on the back side of the baseball field. Um, a little shed to store um, equipment, 
dirt, chalk, all of the sorts. Um, and when we come out of the home side fence at the baseball field, you'll see the high school, middle school up on the hill, um, field house, um, tennis courts, track, and um, soccer fields. As you see, our elementary and main admin building is right off of main highway, highway 259, which goes north of Nacogdoches. As we mentioned earlier, um, when we were viewing the high school and middle school, um, we mentioned the security measures that are in place um, that have been added to the elementary since this building is um, significantly older. They have added um, a wall here um, to have a four-year area so that they can check in with the secretary um, just to add an additional um, safety measure in place. So this is the main entrance of Central Heights Elementary. Um, now this building is going to be um, significantly larger um, than our other campuses because just 12 years ago, um, this building housed pre-K through 12th grade. Um, so it's a little bit more scattered um, than, the, than the other campuses that we've been to. And you'll notice that some of the facilities are a little bit older um, as these are the oldest hallways. Um, in our district. Um, you can see some wood paneling there um, to create an additional wall. Um, so um, we have our concession stand for what used to be the high school gym. Um, now it is an elementary activity gym um, and also used for um, community little dribblers um, games. <clears throat> As you walk in, you realize that it reminds you of, you know, some of the more older gyms that we used to see um, from whenever I was younger. Um, as a middle school basketball player at Hudson, um, I remember coming here um, and playing in this gym a long time ago. PE classes are taught in here. You see some lessons over there on the wall of the human body. There they go. I was wondering when the automatic lights would come on. It just finally picked me up. Um, but you can see it's a significantly larger gym um, than most elementaries have. Um, and like I mentioned, that is because um, this used to be the high school um, gym. As we walk back out of the gym, um, back into the elementary, <clears throat> we'll go down this first hallway that we come to, which is our green hallway which is, um, I know, third grade right here at the front. Um, it does have the same lockers from back whenever this was the middle school and high school hallways. Um, see a special ed classroom. Just some of the, the ways that they've made um, this former high school facility into um, the elementary workroom here. I've gotten a little creative with some of the the redesign of classrooms. And over here we have the resource classroom. And you'll see small classroom um, used for just a handful of students. Come back down and we see that we're still looking at third grade classrooms. We'll take a look into this classroom to see how they look. Make sure we lock the door back whenever the teacher comes back. A lot different than our high school and middle school. Um, one thing I noticed almost immediately is the ceiling height um, is a lot lower. But one thing I do notice here um, that is very similar to the high school and middle school 
for one, they have um, the smart televisions on the wall. But the floors, um, this is the same type of flooring that they added to the high school um, and middle school whenever they built it. Um, it's kind of a textured spray-on floor. Um, it reminds me of a lot of times what you see whenever you are in a garage, um, a garage flooring, if you will. Um, makes it, from what I've heard, really easy for upkeep. Um, not like your old school tile flooring. Um, as we're walking, we still see that uh, the classrooms are third grade. Um, here we are second um, grade hallway now. Um, so uh, the elementary campus um, here in Central Heights um, received uh, an accountability rating of a B um, from this past school year. Um, they did earn a distinction um, and the distinction that they earned was a top 25% comparative closing the gaps. So we'll walk into this classroom, this glasses classroom, since the door's already open. And we see it's a little bit larger than the classroom we walked into earlier. Um, I didn't pay attention earlier, but uh, my thought is, is that those classrooms will also have windows since the hallways are all um, kind of designed the same so that there are separate hallways and then a outdoor courtyard in between, um, which would allow every classroom to have an, I guess, an exterior wall and an exterior window. Um, one thing that I know that they added and we'll take note of it whenever we walk back to the front is that, um, they also have added the filming to the windows so that you can see out, but you can't see in. These windows do not have it, but they do have the uh, metal mesh um, in the windows. So as we walk out of the second and third grade hallway, we come down and this is a hallway that I tend to remember as my daughter um, did go to school at Central Heights um, from pre-K through first grade. Um, we have an exterior door. I know this is the door in which um, the bus line gets dropped off. They'll have the gates at the end opened up and kids will walk down this um, little walkway to come into the building in the mornings. Um, I know one of the safety features that they've talked about is ensuring that those doors are closed and locked at all times. Um, one thing I noticed whenever I was walking down the second and third grade hallway um, is the exterior speaker for the intercom system. We have a nurse's office. Um, from looking at this sign, um, it shows that this portion of the school was built in 1987. The counseling office we passed. And there goes the automatic lights in the purple hallway. And we'll walk down there in just a moment. Um, I was going to peek around this corner as I thought this was another gym. And it is. Um, we also house um, some curriculum or some, there it goes, the automatic lights came on. This is more so what you will see in an elementary gym. Um, and as I was commenting before I stopped the video to make sure the lights would turn on um, earlier is that since there are so many um, classrooms available down here at the elementary, um, some of our district offices are um, housed down here at the elementary. So as we're leaving out of this gym, um, as I was commenting, some of the um, district personnel's um, offices are here. Our curriculum coordinator. Um, you can see just the material that is used for um, the walls is, an, you can tell, it kind of dates itself. Um, these exterior doors lead out to the elementary playground. 
as we all recall, um, had lots of good times in elementary school. Um, I do remember that these doors led out to portable buildings, um, which is where they housed their pre-K and kindergarten back before they built the um, the new schools up on the hill, the element or the middle school and high school. Um, there were portable buildings out here. Um, that little walkway walked up to the the steps of the portable building, and if I recall properly, there was some right here in front of us as well. Um, as I mentioned earlier, whenever my daughter went to school here, um, pre-K through first grade. So as we come back in, make sure this door shuts all the way. And we'll walk down the purple hallway. And we see here that we have first grade classrooms. Um, you see a little bit more decorating and artwork on the walls at the elementary, as opposed to um, our middle school and high school. Another first grade classroom. Dyslexia classroom. Dyslexia classroom. And we'll find a classroom right up here and we'll take a peek into this classroom to see the difference. Um, and the classrooms in this hallway. Pretty standard classroom, I feel like, for an elementary. The sink and water fountain in the classroom. One thing that I did notice is that there are restrooms in the hallway. And um, in my previous experience um, in administration, I did two years as a, an assistant principal at a primary campus, a pre-K through second grade campus. And that building was um, significantly newer um, than this building. And the classrooms um, all had bathrooms in the classroom. But my thought is, is that since this um, was not always an elementary, then it was built for more middle school, high school. Going down the hallway, as we look out these exterior doors, we see that at least we can see the other hallways um, that we just came out of the third, fourth grade hallway. Um, and then the students would walk through there to go to the cafeteria or the cafetorium as it is referred to. Um, since uh, as most elementary, um, the um, cafeteria is also the auditorium. We see some kindergarten classrooms and we'll take a peek into as well. Looks like a shared classroom. Same setup as the first grade classroom that we saw earlier with the water fountain and sink um, in the classroom. So as we walked back up the purple hallway, we're gonna um, check out the fine arts classroom. And as we're walking in, um, the elementary um, last year had 516 total students um, with 70% of those students being white students, 20% um, being Hispanic, and 4% being African American. And so as we walk into the fine arts classrooms, we see some musical instruments. 
Um, it is definitely an older building. Supply closet with costumes and games, microphones. And you can tell we have an art room in here. A lot of art supplies. The um, economically disadvantaged numbers at the elementary campus are 46%, uh, which um, represents the largest um, percentage of economically disadvantaged students in our district. Um, in fact, um, in fact, the elementary campus is a Title I campus, which um, makes our district a Title I district. And I cannot find the light switches for this, but this is a choir classroom, a music classroom. Um, it's got some risers in here. As we're walking through, I'm pretty curious as to what this used to house. Um, it is definitely an older building um, with wood walls. It's got an exterior door. Um, and now as I look outside and notice where we are, we're right on the back side of the softball field. And I know that these bay doors used to be what they said the ag shop was. And so, I'm guessing this is the old ag buildings. Uh, maybe that would explain the higher ceilings. Um, then the other classrooms. So as we're leaving the purple hallway, heading back up towards the main entrance, I know we have one more hallway to go to and that'll lead to the um, cafetorium. Um, but the elementary campus um, has a, an 8% um, emergent bilingual population. Um, has a 10% special ed population and a 5% gifted and talented population. Um, and as mentioned earlier, um, the elementary campus is our only Title I qualified campus, um, which qualifies the whole district as a Title I campus. And back to the beginning, the front. We have our secretaries or the front office in here. And then our fourth and fifth grade um, hallway. And so we'll take a peek into here. Desks are a little higher. Into our classrooms. But as you can see, it's an older classrooms. Um, I know that... Wait for the lights to pop on in here. I know that there is a push. So in this fifth grade science lab, um, and as I was saying, um, an older facilities for sure um, here at the elementary. And I know that our, um, uh, our school is in need of possibly building a new elementary school. And the school is in um, good a good situation with um, purchased land um, to have a location to build the elementary school. But it will be at least five years out as we still have um, several years left on our current bond for the high school and middle school campus. Um, the other day I was actually speaking to the superintendent um, and he said that we owe about six and a half million dollars left on the current bond for the high school middle school. So it will be a little while before um, that is paid off. Um, but our community is ready to build a new elementary campus. Um, as you can see, it's, a, it's older. Um, one of the former entrances, which is now blocked off. Um, teachers can come in with a key card swipe. We have our Peams Clark office. Um, 
just passed one of our technology personnel's um, office, like I mentioned earlier. We, um, since there are additional classrooms or um, available locations here at the elementary, um, some of our district offices are located here. Um, but in conversations about um, building um, a new elementary school, um, there has been talk of possibly demolishing some of the elementary. And I'm not exactly for sure which portions would be, but um, having conversations, they would not get rid of all of it. Um, because currently um, we are in a... There's the cafetorium. Um, as I mentioned earlier, my uh, daughter went to school here. Um, and I recall many of performances um, that she did on this stage. Um, kindergarten graduation on the stage. Um, but we are currently in a special ed co-op. Um, and in that special ed co-op, um, we send all of our life skills and PPCD students to um, Cushing ISD because they are the um, where we house all of those students in our special ed co-op. Central Heights is the financial agent for that co-op. Um, so um, we did get news about a week ago that um, Cushing will be withdrawing from the special ed co-op, um, which is going to leave the question um, for other school districts in the co-op, um, you know, what to do, continue with the co-op or house um, these facilities themselves. Um, and so, the, this building um, could come in very uh, much, come in handy um, for housing those special ed classrooms. Um, also, we currently send all of our AEP students to Nacogdoches, which is not the best case scenario for those students. Um, a lot of times what we have found is uh, um, we send students down there and they come back um, maybe worse than um, when we sent them. And so um, it's something that we would definitely like to look into, you know, being able to house our own AEP campus. Um, and if that means accepting, you know, AEP students from other smaller local schools, then that could be a possibility to help fund that. Um, also, as we mentioned earlier, um, CTE teachers, you know, our ag teachers um, have been requesting a CTE center or an area where they could offer more CTE courses. And I think that um, these older facilities at the elementary could be a good location um, to house some of those um, CTE classes. Um, maybe the CTE center could be down here. Um, there have been talks about adding a culinary program um, as well as a cosmetology program. And since we have the facilities here, I feel like um, when we build a new elementary, um, also you could use some funds to um, do some renovations to make this building um, meet our current needs.